Sorry, can't help myself every time this saw is on my bench. The jointer is one of the most time-saving and useful tools in the shop, but it's also one of the least necessary and consequently is one of the things that most woodworkers buy last in their tool collection. And so I wanted to show you ways to joint a board very easily uh, to avoid having to buy that jointer sooner. You know, jointers are large, they take up a lot of room. Um, anything with any decent capacity is gonna take 220 volt or 240 volt power. Uh, so maybe it's not something you need right now. Let's go over ways to join a board, both edge and face joining, uh, so that you can maybe put off that large purchase until later down the road. Okay, the first way is gonna be using a flush trim bit. We're gonna be using this ultimate flush trim bit from Bits Bits, which by the way, due to my urging, they added their Astro coating to this. So for like 15 bucks more, it doubles the life of these things. I'll link it below. There's a 15% off discount code, best bit on the planet. I use this thing for it everything. Um, so we're going to use a straight edge. I'm going to use my Mox and Vice router template. If you didn't see that video, I'll link it right here. And we've got this really nasty looking edge on this walnut. And we don't need to get everything because we're going to go to the table saw afterwards and get the other edge. So we just need to get a flat reference area to ride against our fence. And then we can do this edge, flip it back over and get this extra nasty part. Um, but we're just going to use some double stick tape and we're going to stick the straight edge. You know what? Here's a little tip for a straight edge. The studs from Steel Stud Construction, if you have anybody who's a drywall friend, ask them for one steel stud. Those things are eight feet long and super straight. Just a little tip for you. Um, so we're going to go ahead and stick this to this walnut and get it jointed up with a flush trim. Okay, uh, our next way is on the table saw. We have this nasty piece of walnut with a big old hump in the middle, you can see. And this would be tough to do on a jointer just because of the nature of it. So one of the things I utilize a lot in the shop is called a straight line rip jig. And it's very simply, it's kind of like crosscut sled. It just has a track that rides in your miter slot and it fits right in your miter slot like that. I put some T-track in it, and I just have these hold down clamps, which are pretty common uh, for CNC, uh, but they just go in T-track with quarter 20 bolts. And all you need to do is line up your board so that just the entirety of the edge is hanging over. And it doesn't really matter what orientation you have it, as long as a piece of the edge is hanging over, you're gonna get a straight edge. And you just take these clamps, lock it down like so, and then we'll just run it through the blade. Okay, our next way is with good old elbow grease, and we're gonna use a hand plane. Now, ideally you want a number seven, or a number eight, number six if you're using a shorter board, but the longest plane you got is what you have to work with. And uh, one of the ways to overcome the lack of the correct plane, because I know we don't all have a collection of hand planes is to have a straight edge that is longer than your board and you can track your progress using it. And if you get high and low spots, you can take those down with the smaller plane if need be. So I made this, this is a super cool jig you can make. I made this years ago and it's just a bunch of magnets with a little cutout for your blade and it just slaps onto the side of your plane like that. And you can use it to keep it 90. If you don't have one of these, uh, just make sure you check often. You don't want to start getting a skew or a twist and it's a lot harder to get back. If you do, just tilt your plane up that way and bring it back until you have a nice square area. So let's go ahead and get this square. Okay, the next way to do a board with a hand plane was, is with winding sticks. Now, I'm not gonna show you this because James Wright is probably the master of this and can explain it a lot better than I am. So I'm gonna link his video about winding sticks down below, but the way that they work is I've taken two pieces of maple that are equal width and I've drawn a Sharpie line on the top and this works with lighter dark wood or you can, James made some really cool inlaid ones. What these winding sticks do is they exaggerate the twist. Um, because they're longer than the board and you can see the different color. It's sort of like when you look out on the horizon and you can see the ocean, this is the same thing. When you look down this board, you can see that this board has a pretty significant twist in it. This side, you can see the black a lot longer than you can over on your left side. 
Okay, and then the most important jointing that we're gonna do is face jointing. This is one that there's not too many other ways to do it besides the winding sticks. Uh, a simple sled that you know is flat that runs through your planer with a stop on it and some shims and some hot glue make this really easy to do. So we take the shims and we find the high spots. And now if you have two corners that are high, you kind of want to split the difference. This one really only has one high spot. So you want to get it so it doesn't twist anymore. And you want to get kind of any gaps and you don't want to lift the board up. You just want to support the space because the way a planer works is the rollers are going to push this in to the bed and create a reference area. So uh, we're just gonna take our shims and make sure that we're either filling the gap or every place is touching on the board. And if you have a spot that is not wide enough for the shim, you can get some sandpaper and sand it down just to get it in there. And we're gonna have to do that there. And then we're gonna hot glue it and we're gonna make sure that we put pencil line on our board and you're gonna see as this goes through the planer, it's only gonna take off the high spots at first. You wanna go until that pencil line is all the way gone and that's how you're gonna know you have a flat board. And then once it's flat, you just flip it over because you know you have a flat reference area and then you can flip it over and run it through the planer again and it's gonna give you a perfectly jointed parallel flat board. As you can see guys, no more twist. And that is a great technique. Took about six minutes or so to do. And I left this corner here so you can tell this was the corner that originally was really high that we had the shims under. And when you flip it over, it's the last corner to get plain. And you saw me using pencil there. Pencil's great, especially when you're jointing with a board and you're not sure if it's flat because you can see if there's any inconsistencies when you're making passes. And I didn't want to ruin a board by taking it down another eighth of an inch uh, because it's just for a demo. But it came out great. and. You don't need to buy a jointer yet. And if you're building out your shop, jointer should be one of the last things you buy because there's lots of ways to get it done without it. So I hope you learned something on this, guys. Greatest way to support the channel is head over to the Cat's Moses store, get a shirt, a dovetail jig, or a stop block. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay safe in the shop, and we'll see you on the next one.